Good morning, Ryan. Thanks for joining us. Always, I, I learn something every darn. I say that every darn time you come on the show, I learn. He's a good person to know. I'm doing my job. Uh, if you're learning something, I, hopefully everyone else out here well, is too. Well, I think everyone who contacts you should. Yeah. Uh, you're board certified, right? I am board certified in medical malpractice yeah. law. We take a verbal test, a written test, or examination. You have to have so many jury trials to qualify, and then we have to have judges who will write recommendations to the American Board of Professional Liability Attorneys and once you go through that process it's very similar to what doctors do when they're board certified okay. um, once you get that board certification you can then represent to the public as I am here today that I specialize have expertise in medical malpractice litigation. Now what's so interesting about the field that you went into specifically you're not only an attorney which is fascinating work at least from my perspective but you know a heck of a lot about medicine yeah. and medical. It's almost like you're not a doctor but a you frustrated know. doctor is what yeah. they call him. I am a frustrated doctor. <laughs> but I you love got it. the insight and I, I call yeah. him a lot of times just to run things by him when I'm dealing with stuff just because I trust your judgment and a Along those lines, you talk about sometimes, you know, juries, trials. I'm just wondering, there's people out there maybe, this medical issues can be personal too. They may have had a doctor that they, they trust and they don't want to sue that person. Mm -hmm. And maybe they're also worried about, oh, I don't want to really go through a trial. Now, maybe you can address those issues. All your cases don't always go to trial. No. Now, you're not afraid to litigate. No, well, you can't but, be afraid and do this. Oh, there are attorneys out there that I wonder, do they ever litigate? You know, meaning go into the courtroom. And if the person you're suing knows that you don't have the the guts to get in there and sue them in court and argue before a judge, you're not going to get the settlement you'd like. In my world, there's a very small number of yeah. lawyers who are board certified in medical malpractice law, and there are very few lawyers that actually handle these cases that, that know what they're doing. In my area in particular, there are a lot of jury trials because doctors and hospitals, they take these cases personally. Mm. Now, the hospital's less because it's a business, but the doctors in particular are very, very stubborn in terms of agreeing to a settlement. So you have to be prepared to go to trial um, to basically send a message to them. Right. Uh, and so that's what I do. I've been doing it for, like I said, I'm going on 30 years now, and probably about three-fourths of the cases settle. Is that because, too, would the clients in most cases prefer not to have a trial? Absolutely. You, you probably have had a few that said, no, I want to go all the way. No settle. Let's go get them. But in general, do most clients probably figure, if we can settle this, I don't have to testify. I'd like to do that. You know, Nick, a lot of them would. They would rather not even have to have a lawsuit. They would love to have a mediation, yeah. sit down, discuss the problem. The, the, in a perfect world, that's how it would happen, but it doesn't. And in, in, in particularly in this area of litigation, you have to have somebody you have to have a lawyer that's willing to go the distance with the insurance company. And by the way, so everybody knows, if you don't remember anything from this show today other than the exact technique, remember every doctor has malpractice insurance. They don't pay out of their pocket on claims their insurance company does. And every hospital has insurance. Sometimes it's self-insurance like Vanderbilt mm -hmm. or TriStar. They've got their own insurance that they can rely on to pay claims. So doctors and hospitals don't have to pay for these things out of their pocket. Their insurance company does. And that's what makes it easy to some extent for doctors to refuse to settle is, hey, it's no skin off my back. I'm not paying any money. Mm -hmm. Let the insurance company pay. So you have to have a lawyer willing to go the distance in these cases to force the insurance company to say, well, you know, we're going to try to pay this claim off, try to convince the doctor to allow a settlement. Yeah, you know, one story you told me that stuck with me that I think the viewers should always hear is that you've had a case, and this isn't going to happen every time because there's mm -hmm. going to be harsh feelings on either side, but where so often doctors just, well, let's fight this for heck, they, they, even if they know they made a mistake. Yeah. You've had a case where she told me about where the, the doctor actually came in and fell on his sword, if you will, or more or less came in and just was apologetic yeah. and said, listen, I made a mistake, we want to make this right, and was very upfront and said, I did this, I wanted to, and honest with your client, who I think appreciated that. Now, I'm not sure that necessarily meant, did it, he, he, they didn't play as hardball, perhaps. Uh, how did that play out? I mean, obviously the client still is going to get compensation, but did it make a difference when there was a doctor who actually was honest about it, apologetic, and said, what can we do? Yeah, the best case that I can think of that falls in that category was a lady who had an obstetric procedure that involved superheated water that was supposed to, it's called an ablation. It's meant to, to uh, superheat the inside of the uterus and kill off old tissue. And <coughs> some of that water leaked out down 
the area between her vagina and her anus and over the top of her buttocks and burned it. Third oh, degree no. burns. It looked like, oh, no. you know, you've seen on a volcano where the lava trickles down. Yep. That's what it looked like on her buttocks. Oh, no. And it was permanent scarring. She had to have skin grafts at Vanderbilt. She slept in a, like a, a, a sand bed. That had to be with, so painful, too. With, with tin foil on it for a week. Okay. Okay, that's how bad it was. Anyway, long story short, we get through the depositions. We go to mediation. And the hospital's representative said, I want to talk to your client, Clint. If you don't mind, you can be there, monitor it. I just want to apologize to your client on behalf of my my client. Hmm. I said, well, okay, that's fine. I'm moving you. And I mean, it was one of those heartfelt apologies for the hospital. And and that saved the hospital a quarter million dollars. I'm telling you right here, I could have got another quarter million dollars out of that hospital. But my client was so moved by that apology. And no one had said that to her up to that mm -hmm, point. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the, the the surgeon in that case never apologized. That's a whole other story. Oh. But the hospital saved themselves considerable money because their lawyer did the right thing at the right time with a client who just wanted to hear someone say, I'm sorry. Yeah. And not every client's going to be like that, of mm -hmm. course. But this one here, I wonder how... They knew, and good for them. I guess it cost you a quarter million dollars, but good for her. And I, I think, you know what? I gotta be honest with you. Depending on how it played out, I, that would make a difference for me. I would want compensation to pay for, but I'm not out to get every darn red cent. And if I see someone who is truly apologetic and heartfelt, I'm gonna be more willing to work with them. Nick, I can always make a dollar. I can make a quarter million, you mm -hmm. know, in my business. Watching that happen was worth every penny of it. And I love the story. I, just I mean love that. It, it was yeah. worth every penny of it to watch that process happen in my business because it's so rare. Yes. To see to that kind of peace. Mm -hmm. You know, there is such a thing as burying the hatchet and bringing peace to litigation and at least in so far as the hospital was concerned that's exactly what they did and it was worth it to see it happen and a lot of patients would just love to have that they're reasonable people they don't want to yeah. take the hospital or the doctor to the to the woodshed they just want a reasonable settlement and preferably an apology now most instances they write the apology on the check, so to speak. That's what it is. The check is the well, apology. Right. I mean, well, how many times have there been settlements or one thing, one or the other, and I'll call you on this, and you'll just say, Nick, I can't comment at this right. point. Because at that point, there's like, hey, we're giving you the money, but that's the end of it now, non-disclosure. Is that what, right. how does that play out? Nine times out of 10, you're never gonna settle, uh, nine times out of 10, you're gonna settle a case, and you will not be allowed to talk Meaning about it. one of their the requirements dollars. is, okay, we're gonna write yes. you the check and settle it, and we'll put this behind us, but that means no more public conversation Absolutely, about this. Absolutely, because there's, well, I understand they're that buying their peace, Nick. They're buying their peace. That's right. We don't want to talk about it anymore. We don't want this getting out. We don't want the word spreading that such and such hospital pays such and such money for claims. We want peace and quiet. Now, the flip side of that, unfortunately, is it's hard for us to value claims when you don't get to talk about it. Mm -hmm. and what I mean by that is there's no way to know really what hospitals and doctors are paying on claims because can't share the information. Can lawyers over a drink discuss this off the record amongst themselves to get an idea of what do you think this case is worth? No. <laughs> I mean, that's what the rules of confidentiality Never? are for. No, you, you, can't you don't do, do that. that. No. So now... Yep. Otherwise, what are they, what are they Aren't there guidelines? For? Well, there have to be some guidelines out there. I'm not talking about specifics mm -hmm. like what did you settle for, where you tell where you settled. Mm -hmm. But aren't there general guidelines for what you get for um, someone who had a wrong leg amputated? Mm -hmm. There's not general guidelines for no. how much you get, how much that's worth. It can no. vary. It can vary. It, you can do jury verdict research. Now, jury verdicts are not confidential, so you can look uh, and see what right. did the jury do. Okay, but jury, but if it's settlements, you can't. Exactly. There's so few cases now that juries so, are deciding. It's hard to tell what the how value do you is. You decide then when you're making a case. When you, you'll decide when you see the harm to the clip. Mm -hmm. I guess your own personal experience with all the cases you've done, you're able to say, I've seen this before. I know what I've settled on this before myself. It's confidential, but you know it, mm -hmm. and you can say that's what I can get for this. Client. I mean, how do you decide what something's worth? That's where my board certification comes in. I know from my experience and my judgment and doing research how to value a case. And also the, the insurance company for the doctor in the hospital, they know from their own data bank what they typically pay. But at the, end, at the end of the day, it's what they and I are able to arrive at as a reasonable figure. Sometimes I may take a little less on a claim. Okay. Sometimes I might make a little more on a claim. But that's where my board certification comes into play because I can value case where lawyers who don't specialize in this aren't as good at doing that. Oh, for sure. By the way, that goes both ways. Whereas you would not be able to commiserate with other attorneys to talk about things that have been, you know, sealed. 
hospitals, same way, if, if a hospital, this one hospital over here has reached that agreement, and another hospital, could they share how much they ended up paying for a malpractice case? They're not supposed to. Same I, way, I don't, man. Yeah, I don't know if they I don't, do or don't. I don't know what they or do. Or insurance companies, I right. guess. It, now, the insurance companies, they're in a different boat because uh. a lot of them are not signatories to the agreement. And they have data banks that they share with each other. So I don't know that, I don't believe the provisions apply to them to the same extent as they do to me and to my client. Mm -hmm. But I can't just go around and call another lawyer up and say, what did you settle such and such case for? Unless it was not sealed. Right. Yeah. The, only way, that, the only way that I could even do that would be to ask another lawyer, another board certified lawyer, which is what I can do. I can call a guy up and say, his name is Chip. I can say, Chip, I got a case with a, a patient who is uh, wheelchair bound, age 56, has got a life care plan for $5 million. What do you think the value of that case is based on your experience? Mm -hmm. And he can tell me what he thinks the value is based on similar cases he's had that he's settled. Okay. See, that's how it works. Okay, so and that's fair enough. You can get mm -hmm. kind of a ball game because there's track records out. There. But I can't go and say what did TriStar Stonecrest pay on such and such case. Right. It's such right. as that, that doesn't okay, work. Okay, and I think that's why I, I knew you couldn't do yeah. that. But I thought maybe in general, because you guys see a lot of cases. Yes. I mean a lot. Of them. Um, one thing too, and we got to hit on this before we get into some of these other cases: statute of limitations. You talked about one with regard to joints. But for others, it's much shorter than that. It, it is. It, it's one year from the date that you discover you're injured. And it's very important for people to know this. If you go one year and one day beyond that, you got no claim. Right. The doors are shut to the courthouse. Let's throw and, that out. Every, every show we got to do Tennessee this. law is very strict on this, so people need to remember you got one year from the date that you discover you've been injured by medical negligence or hospital negligence to bring a claim. Yeah. So if you think something's happened that may be constitute Just do it. Do it. Just make the call. It costs you nothing. Free. It's easy. And then you know, rather than the people that have come to me, you and I've talked about this a lot, they'll come to me a year and a half later mm -hmm. and, and have a great case. You know, I, I mean you could prove there was a violation of the standard of care. You can prove a major injury, but I have to tell that client, I'm sorry I can't take your case. You waited too long. Gosh, before we go to break, I want to squeeze in Martin. He just called okay. in and was waiting through. Martin, good morning. Hi, Martin. Yes, hi. How you doing? Good. What's on your mind, sir? Uh, I went to uh, uh, Southern Hills uh, Hospital for three years. I I'm a landscaper. I do landscaping work. And Southern Hills kept sending me back home saying, I'm a landscaper. All I've done is pulled a muscle in my back, they give me pain medications and send me home. They did that for three years. Finally, I was in so much pain, I went down there, and my wife just went berserk and told them that, that I'm not going back home today. Y'all need to uh, do an MRI or something to find out what's going on with him. There was a doctor there on staff that was uh, heard the conversation made them do an MRI on me. An hour later, they came back and told me I had stage four cancer. Oh, man. Oh, boy. All right, Martin, okay, we'll have to get in it. Can you stay with us on the line? Yeah. We've got to take a break. We'll come back. Stay on the line, Martin, sure. and we're going to pick up on I your will. question, and, and we'll see what Clint thinks of this right after this. Stay with us.